These days you hear people talking about living on Mars. As if you get there, pitch your fancy tent, and all will be nice and cozy. It might be a bit harder than that. Talking about colonizing other planets, the main challenge always seems to be getting there. Things like building the spacecraft and transporting all the necessary stuff to set up camp there. But that's only the first challenge. Once we get there, we have to be able to survive the often harsh environment with the limited resources we have managed to take with us. And a pretty big factor in determining the chance of survival is the weather on the destination planet. Here on Earth, we certainly experience extreme weather conditions. Winds so strong that rip off roofs from houses. Rains so heavy that flood and submerge whole towns. In some places, it gets so hot that you could fry your bacon and eggs on the hood of a car. And in some places, your spit will freeze before getting to the ground. But despite all that, and despite the many problems global warming is posing, we should really cherish what we have. In fact, nowhere else can we have it so good. Let's take a look at our neighbors in the solar system, which, let's be realistic, are the only alternatives for relocation in the imaginable future. We'll start on Mars, which has always been considered the next best option for relocation. Well, before packing your stuff and booking a place on Elon Musk's next spaceship, consider this. In the summer daytime, the temperatures only get up to about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. But at night, the temperatures drop to minus 200. The coldest temperatures we have recorded on Earth is in Vostok, Antarctica, where on July 21st, 1983, it was negative 129 degrees Fahrenheit. The weather on Mars oscillates so wildly because the air is very thin and the heat escapes during the night. And despite the thin atmosphere, it is only 1% as thick as that of Earth. It has no shortage of winds. Huge dust storms that last for weeks are quite common. So living on Mars is by no means guaranteed to be possible, let alone pleasant. How about Venus? It is closer to the sun, so the weather should be warmer than Mars, right? It gets hot, but too hot for comfort. Venus has a thick atmosphere made of carbon dioxide which traps the sun's heat and turns it into a greenhouse. But a greenhouse without the happy plants. For comparison, the hottest day recorded on Earth, in California's Death Valley, was 134 degrees Fahrenheit. On Venus, the surface temperatures can easily get to 900 degrees. In temperatures that would melt lead, setting up a settlement is quite the challenge. Let's go even further and see what Jupiter is like. Jupiter's great red spot the beautiful swirling pattern is actually a raging hurricane containing winds of about 250 miles per hour. The strongest hurricane winds here on Earth only reach 200 miles per hour. And apart from the giant hurricane that can swallow two Earths whole, Jupiter is also a gaseous planet which definitively rules out settlement on its surface. We would encounter the same kind of problems on Saturn, except the winds of Jupiter are gentle breezes compared to Saturn. Saturn can be easily observed through even a small telescope, and its clouds along with the rings around it make it one of the nicest looking planets in the solar system. But being among those clouds wouldn't be a nice experience for us humans. They are moving at speeds of around 1,000 miles per hour, and they blow in opposite directions, some going eastward, some blowing westward. I don't know about you, but that's not the kind of cloud I dream of walking on. What about all the moons around the solar system? Since we can't actually land on Jupiter or Saturn, we can only settle on them by going around them as a satellite. But there are already some moons there. Maybe they have better weather. Europa, one of Jupiter's moons, would probably be a prime destination, if you're interested in ice skating, that is. It is covered with smooth ice, and its gravity is only about one-eighth of that of Earth. So the ice skating experience would be enjoyable, especially for newbies. You would need a special suit, though, and a suit that can cope with temperatures of around negative uh, 300 degrees would surely crimp your style. It doesn't get any better on Titan, the second largest moon in the solar system. Yeah, Titan is covered in thick, hazy clouds that are capable of creating rain. But unfortunately for us, the liquids in question are either methane or ethane, which indicate that the temperature is about negative 300 degrees Fahrenheit. The existence of clouds, rain, and lakes is no guarantee of a nice climate. You probably have guessed by now that things don't improve as we move further away from the Sun. Uranus and Neptune are made of gas and are both extremely windy. 
Triton, one of Neptune's moons, is solid and contains nitrogen in its atmosphere. But yet again, its surface temperature is negative 390 degrees Fahrenheit, one of the coldest in the solar system. All of this is to say Earth by far has the most pleasant weather. For all the terrible weather events like tsunamis, hurricanes, and storms we experience, they are extremely rare events. And what's more, we can prepare for them. Using new technologies, we can predict any potential disruptive weather event more and more accurately. As much as the image of us inhabiting some other planet is alluring, we should try to remember that we only have this blue planet to accommodate us for a long time to come and nowhere else.